we're following close behind Brunel, we saw another mast in the distance, which uh, as we approached um, to about five, six miles, we could see was a cruising boat with no sails on. And um, luckily we had a drone on board and we sent that over and we took some pictures of the boat and video and came back, had a look at it and recognized it was a boat called Sea Nymph. Uh, and that had been abandoned last summer quite uh, in quite a high profile uh, case where uh, two women and a dog got off the boat uh, and um, they were on, on the TV news of America especially um, so uh, then we knew that there wasn't anyone on board uh, we checked with race control and they confirmed that that, that was the boat and um, so we went close by and you could see that it was uh, the boom was broken, the sails were uh, down, and uh, there was no one on board. So we uh, we carried on, and hopefully we can uh, someone can go out and salvage it and clean that boat uh, up off the ocean. Magic, you know, we're, it's great ripping along with 20 plus knots of boat speed, just exactly what you want to be doing. Um, trying to get to where we need to get to quickly. Seriously wet, like I've never seen boats like this. They are just so wet. <laughs> it's epic, it's good fun though. Just non stop spray in your face, no reprieve. It's all to play for, you know. Um, we saw in the last leg coming the other way. You just got to try and everyone's got to try and pick their spot in the doldrums. Cutting the corner again. Yep. <laughs> Cutting the corner again. Thanks, Vic. I think everybody tried to stay together uh, because. Um, situation is not clear and uh, it's difficult to find a good position uh, to, uh, to cross the room so uh, you can see that everybody wants to stay together. We've got Matt Frey right next to us so it's a lot of fun because you're just neck and neck racing and sometimes they take a little pressure and come down to us and then we get the pressure and get away again so No, we're uh, struggling a little bit at the moment. We're uh, just kind of going in and out on the guys in front of us. Um, yeah, but they've just extended quite a bit at the moment. Um, yeah, so we're not quite sure whether it's a sail or just pressure. There's a fair few light squalls and little fronts and stuff around that kind of push people forward and back. But uh, we seem to be going all right on our targets. So. Hopefully it's just uh, pressure and we'll get it back at some stage soon, but not quite sure. Yeah, there's no reason why we can't finish at the top in Auckland, so uh, we're definitely fighting for that. And uh, if we don't finish in the top, then we definitely want to be within boat lengths of it, because that's where we've been racing this leg so far.
A supercharged Sunday session witnessed five races on a bursting Geelong program and the series leader was overexcited at the start. It's not the start Glen Ashby would have wanted either in front of all his home fans. With Euroflex penalised, Pavement pounced, enjoying her time at the front. A drag race followed as Outeridge and Co clawed back, surging to the line. Euroflex, they've shuffled the deck up and it looks like they've got a blackjack. Race five and the hopes of ID took a dive as Ed Powies checked out Geelong's marine attractions. And this time it's freestyle. Good to see the Poms are learning a bit of the Australian technique. And there was more drama to follow, a snapped foil ending their day. A close call at the pointy end, no free passes from Tech 2. Oh, that was close, Jimmy. Luke Parkinson's crew had limited time to prepare for race six, encountering trouble on their way to the line. Clean made with some unusual equipment troubles, Harry Morton with a unique fashion statement. Well, look, I've heard of Michael Jackson wearing one glove, but Harry's got on the one booty there. It's a good look. Don't know if it'll catch on. In race seven, Steve Thomas tested the nerves of everyone on board the circuit front runner. And they're going really close. Oh, they really had the squeeze on there. Goodness me, I think. As a sidelined, Paul Campbell James was making the most of his time off the water. And look at him. He's... he's sucking a few beers back there on the spectator craft. This guy lives the dream. While Tech 2 continued to throw down the challenge. Two, one, driving. But nobody was able to upset Euroflex who secured a clean sweep of the Victorian regatta to continue their perfect run to 15 races. Oh, good stuff, Goobs. Well, we were approached by Tim Powell and obviously Nicholas to design them a new Fast 40. I think probably that came about due to our success in the previous two series uh, with Girls in Film and obviously Hitchhiker and Rebellion. And uh, you know, Nicholas was looking to take a break out of the 52 class and sail in the UK and join the Fast 40 series. They bring a lot to the table, very high uh, level and uh, sailing team and, and organisation. So it's a really good fit for where we are in terms of offering a very high-end design package. Well today was our first client meeting really, so Nicholas was here to see, see the boat, see the progress and chat with Sean about the, the boat itself, the philosophy of the boat compared to the previous boats. So I've done quite a lot of work with Nicholas before, both sailing with him and looking after the builds of most of his previous boats, not all of them but most of them. In terms of construction, the decision was to go with Jason Carrington. He's obviously a, you know, an outstanding builder with a, with a huge track record. You know, he was always their number one candidate. He's now opened his own facility here in, in Hyde in, in the UK. It's absolutely fantastic, a very high level of equipment and guys working here. So we're really pushing the boundaries in terms of the design because we know that Jason can deliver on the quality and the accuracy and just where we are setting the bar at this stage of our Fast 40 development. There's quite an opportunity in the Fast 40s to make a gain if you like both I'd say the structure of the boat and you can certainly save some weight in the build of the boat. This time around we've had a blank sheet of paper with regards to being able to explore within the Fast 40 rule itself but obviously also look at um, re-engineering the boats, uh, redeveloping the systems. We're developing in-house an electrical drive system which is going to be a, a world first in terms of that level of electric system in a, in a boat of this size and um, you know it's coming along very nicely. With respect to the previous design, we've now gone from an infused carbon construction to a full pre-preg boat. So we're utilizing different types of fibers compared to last year, where last year it was more of a biaxial layup, whereas this year it's more of a unidirectional layup. So there's a lot more precision in, in, in terms of identifying and optimizing versus the, you know, the load paths in the boat. So we've got a very, very high end structure, which we've been working with um, Mark Bishop in the, in the United States, on our, our composite engineer. And also obviously internally with the Kaki design team, you know, Guinness, Ginnemann and, and, and Chris Pierce on developing, you know, an outstanding kind of engineering solution. 
we have the inner skin of the, uh, the hull to finish and the deck, but most of the, the internal structure is complete. And in the coming weeks, the boat will be coming out of the mold and the, obviously the assembly phase and fit out phase of the boat will, uh, will commence. A couple more of the sailing team from RAN will be on site between now and the finish to work with us on fitting out the, uh, the systems. And then, you know, obviously it will go through a commissioning phase. We're looking forward to seeing the end result. Yeah, yeah, really good and, uh, you know, really busy. So I'm actually buggered. So I might have to go straight into watch system in about 20 minutes and go to sleep, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be a lot further north early um, in this pressure. So, you know, we're going to be up the coast of Taiwan. and So the doldrums are still going to be there, but um, it won't be as tricky as last time. Um, I think it'll be when everyone decides to actually cross them, how far east we'll get. So I think that'll be more a decision on where you are in the fleet rather than what's going on at the time. So it's sort of a reverse of last time. So, uh, yeah, 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 no, we're improving all the time. It's good to be in front of Bowie. That's, uh, it's a bit of a big tick on the box, so we've got to try and stay in front of them. Um, good result here, we should be third overall in Auckland, with about half the race to go, with half the points to go, so we're going in the right direction. Just yeah, Wara, no, nah, it's crap, mate. Wara got hurt trying to leave the dock yesterday, um, really badly, actually. He's got to fly him back today to have surgery. Um, so we've had to fly in Marcus, who sails on the 100 with us. Um, I don't even know if he's going to get here. He's at Customs. So last, last, last info I had was he wasn't even going to get here, so... Just another thing the scallywags have to deal with. Yeah, yeah, really good. And they love their yachting down there, the Kiwis too, don't they? Rugby and the, my two passions are rugby and yachting. They're the same as the Kiwis. It's about the only thing Kiwis and I have in common. But, uh, and maybe a beer. So uh, looking forward to get back to Auckland. says is that we're a southern boat pushing along the front of the front like everyone else but really the whole thing's just smoke and mirrors. I think navigators make it up so they can charge me money. And really it's just a bunch of pretty pictures and um, whatever happens happens. All I know is we're now pointing at New Zealand which is a lot better than pointing at Japan so I think we're going the right way. That's all I have to say about that. Another day in the life of uh, Team Scallywag. Pressure's down a little bit, so uh, not getting fire hose so much. We're just having a little tidy up while we can. Um, but yeah, no, it's all good. All good. Happy days. Looks like um, the plan that the brain struck downstairs to put it into action might, might be working as we get further down the track. So, you know, we just keep believing and keep pushing and try and make the boat go as quick as we can and we'll see where we get to. That's how bored you get. Yeah. <laughs> I should be sleeping, but I'm not. So it's not that bad. This is, this is pretty nice here. You got a bit of a hybrid. Mix a couple of freeze dryers together and a bit of hot sauce. It's, it's good. Not very exciting, mate. Round off day here. Get up, steer 110, go to bed. Get up, steer 110, go to bed. Get up, steer 110, go to bed. strong line which we all saw yesterday or the day before when it caught us up um, and the leaders because the angle of the front of where they are they're kind of nudging out of it now um, and in front of it there's very little wind so again it should give us an opportunity to close some miles as we'll stay with the breeze and with the front of it longer so yeah watch this space the next 12 hours Doo -doo -doo -doo.
Welcome everybody to Sydney Harbour on a very blustery Sunday. Breeze is in the southeast, and today we are into our third weekend of the Australian National Championships, a sprint series. So today we have races five and six. Uh, on board today in the commentary roles is Andrew Buckland and Steve Quigley. And with about four minutes to go, Steve, uh, who do you think is going to uh, deal best with this breezy? Breezy day and short courses. Thanks, Wazza. Welcome, viewers. It's um, it's an amazing day in Sydney Harbour. I'll, I'll start with how we see it up the course first. I think. I think you know it, it's really fresh. It's a good, solid southeast. Uh, I think that you know. I think the boats that stay upright clearly are going to going to dominate the day. So you know your strategy is going to be don't crash, don't capsize, don't drop your spinnaker in the water. Uh, and I think to that end, you know, the guys with the good crew work, the guys like uh, AOL, uh, ASCO, Smeg, Kitchen Maker, and I'm also going to pick Rag and Famish as well. We've got two races, as you said. Uh, we're not even halfway through this championship yet. It's a uh, race, you know, after the first race, we'll be halfway. And it's still a very wide open championship. So, Bucko, it's, it's still very fresh and exciting, but the crew's doing a pretty good job. I mean, you know, they're probably 50% of the boat have reefs. As you said, Smeg's got a reef in. Ilvi hasn't. Yeah. Um, so. So we'll go down. We'll, we'll uh, go down with Ilve. I mean, Smeg have got this unless they have a capsize. But I will give Ilve a bit of air time. <laughs> this is when we get the section of the book out that says what could possibly go wrong, don't we? Yeah. Well, the so, problem is they haven't got their tack line out, and yeah, that's no, dangerous. No, no. And the boat. No, now they're they'll, getting sorted. They'll save it. A bit of a knot in the chute too, but I'll be right. It should blow out they're in not, this sort of breeze. The knot will come out, I reckon. Oh, maybe oh, not. Wow. <laughs> that's a it's knot. A knot. <laughs> that's a good knot. It's, it's a double knot. Knots. Oh, you might be dropping or jibing to get oh. out of that one, boys. Oh, no. And, there she goes. And just in front of them, rag and famish uh, in the drink. Yeah. So they've be. had a capsize. capsize. So yeah. we'll uh, chase Ollie and the Ilveg team down. Capsized in the tank. Rag and Famish. <clears throat> wow, they're full load there. They are just smoking. Bumps coming up, bit of air time. The pitches, air time, air time. Fantastic. Get setting up for the Set jibe. Up to jibe. Nice bit of bumpy water. Ooh. Yeah, right in the bumpy water. Ooh. Well done, boys. Not bad. Not finished yet. Ooh. We've got a guy out the back being washed out. Ooh, Charlie, get back on board, mate. Hang on, oh. and there's a big gust coming. There's like a mighty gust coming. They've just got it under control in time. Wow. Living, look at this living dangerously. Look at this mm. pressure, yes. boys. And just a a just for the viewers back home, was it? The third, fourth, fifth boats have just gone round the top mark, and third, Finport, AOL fourth, Woody fifth, Lumix sixth. Next in's going to be Asco, Rag, what are we Triple M, and then possibly the Kitchen Maker. Oh, here we go. Okay. And water all over the deck of the camera cat. That wasn't in the brochure. No. Feels like an ocean race, Bucker. Yeah. So we've got man, forehand hands got in. Oh, okay. Del Zotto's coming up, which has right. So they've had to go a low mode to get behind Del Zotto. So that's been well managed and well spotted early on. So that's good management. So one more good job, and they've the Smeg just finishing as we speak. Yeah, Pedro dropped the main there, I think, boys. So he's gone back into retrieve. He should come out, hook up, and they'll light it up again. That's a distance, you can see it visually. 
from the drone shot, the distance that Ilve's got over the, that chasing pack, fighting for third. Beautiful footage from our drone there. Great safe jibe. And Beauty. again, for the viewers at home, out of screen, Smeg's just finished the race, a clear winner. So that will put Smeg into the lead in the championship? It will now, yep. I think there was only one point between, one or two points between them, and Woody's currently in fourth, so it's still very close, was it? Yep, and I think... But advantage to Smeg. Okay, and I think, Steve, this will be, uh, from a scratch race perspective, will be... Ollie's best performance since he's been in it. That's, uh, that's just my recollection of things. They're very unofficial, yeah. of course. We'd have to go back to the history books, but I'd suggest... We're not going to do certainly that. Certainly one of his we'll, best. We'll say Let's it. go. It's one of his best. <laughs> great stuff. Well yeah, done. Great well stuff. sailed. Loadmaster for Seven Star. I'm Bo Captain for Prepares. We finished off the loading of the Maxi 72, so you can see behind me. You know, we use Seven Star here for moving across large bodies of water. Just finishing off loading their equipment, containers, the crews getting them ready for the race season in the Caribbean. I had a long relationship, a lot of history with Seven Star over the years, and they're really nice to us, very accommodating. Love the Loadmasters, they're all fantastic people. The boat captains are really easy to to speak to. It's a really nice experience. Uh, they're, they're very well versed in our style of boats. Well, we should be competing this evening and they'll be sailing towards their destination tonight. I wish the weather was a little bit better, but uh, yeah, smooth operation here in St. Thomas. Arrived a day early and uh, all the boats in the water. Job done. Damien Marley, the Grammy Award-winning son of Bob Marley, made a huge impact on the 50th edition of Antigua Sailing Week. Half the island turned up, as well as the sailors taking part. Interesting guy, too. Words is my, that's a big part of my um, tool for the work I do. You know what I mean? So I'm big on words, very peculiar words. Words that I don't hear a lot of other people using in their lyrics. You know what I mean? Words that I think might either make somebody smile or evoke an emotional response from someone, whether it's a laugh, whether it's a sigh, whether it's a being angry, whatever it be. So I'm big on words. After the Nonsuch Bay RS Elite Challenge, it was back to business on Caribbean Sailing Association, or CSA, race day four. Amongst the charter fleets, CSA Bareboat Class 1 is the biggest with 18 entries. KHMP Barvastro, skippered by Thomas Sparda, was leading into the day, but things didn't go all their way in race 6. Yes, it was a, a fight at the starting line. I want to get a better position to, for starting and it was, a, it was a mistake for me. Shit happens, yes. <laughs> Her HMP is a company you can trust on. And if you got some problems, you t uh, took to the, to the boss, to the Hartmut, and Hartmut will fix all problems. We try to fix some of these let me say problems or situations where we try to help people or we try to bring them back in a good mood even if uh, we cannot fix everything. Hartmut is a big deal here because over the past 27 years he's organized 500 charter boats bringing over 3,000 sailors to this regatta. 
I'm always happy to bring so many people back to, to these uh, islands. Another hot battle on the water has been raging in CSA 6 between the young Antiguan crew aboard Cork 1720 Spirit and Caribbean legend Fritz Bus on his Melgis 24 Island Waterworld. It's a really interesting battle because you know, 30 years ago maybe my parents had the same battle with the skipper Fritz Bus. We are enjoying this regatta the most because we have this fantastic battle with these uh, youngsters and they have such a good insight on uh, tactics and uh, on uh, how to sail, how to work the boat. Go guys, keep it up. I mean, we've been match racing up the fleet every single day. You can have our exclusive sailing TV channel today in your club, sail and power. Contact us now at info at boatson.tv.